It's said to be faster than trains, safer than cars, and less damaging to the environment than aircraft. Hyperloop technology is quickly gaining momentum. Hyperloop is said to change how we move around the world. Would you like to know what Hyperloop is? Keep watching this video to find out more about Hyperloop and how it can change transportation systems. You're watching Top 10 World. And in today's video, we'll see how Hyperloop can change transportation systems around the world. But before we hop into the details, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. The advantages of Hyperloop are considerable. Like train stations. Elon Musk's latest invention, the Hyperloop, is racing ahead and is predicted to be ready for commercial operations by 2021. But just how practical is this pod that shoots you through a vacuum at 700 miles per hour? Let's find out. Elon Musk is not any stranger to extraordinary technological predictions, and his forecast for hyperspeed travel is not any less dramatic than an Arthur C. Clarke novel. Yet Hyperloop technology could rather be a functioning part of society by 2030. Musk first coined the term back in 2013 with a thought to make a replacement mode of transport for people and freight and support the growing global economic requirements of faster, cheaper, safer, and more efficient transportation. The Hyperloop concept may be a tube train design where capsules will accelerate gradually via electric propulsion through a low-pressure tube. Float above the tracks using maglev, then glide for long distances at speeds up to 1220 kilometers per hour thanks to ultra-low aerodynamic drag. Tests of the concept are currently happening in France and therefore the USA. And there are currently numerous proposals for Hyperloop projects and routes in North America, Europe, the Center East, India, and South Korea. This potential is driving innovative engineering advances and substantial investments are starting to be committed. SpaceX's key components of the proposed design are as follows. Capsules with a magnetic levitation system are proposed for the capsules to ensure low frictional losses. Each capsule will have an onboard compressor to reduce choked flow effects when passing through the tube at high speeds and thus addressing issues related to the Kantrowitz limit, the maximum speed that the pod can travel before flow around the pod chokes and air resistance sharply increases. The initial Hyperloop design would include a capsule with a carrying capacity of 28 passengers, with departures every two minutes, which could be reduced to 30 seconds during peak times, an operating capacity of 840 passengers per hour is assumed. Based on the claimed speed of travel, the capsules would be separated by approximately 37 kilometers on average. A larger system has also been proposed for transportation of three full-size cars and passengers. To achieve the proposed maximum speed of 1,220 kilometers per hour, an advanced linear motor would propel the capsules at a maximum acceleration of 1G. Smaller linear motors are planned for urban areas for which the topography would necessitate lower speed travel and changes in gradients. Similar systems were proposed to be used for deceleration of the capsules as they approach their final destination with an energy storage system to improve system efficiency. And Hyperloop TT is currently in the works to build and test a full-size project in Abu Dhabi. The tubes were proposed to be constructed from steel, with two separate tubes mounted side-by-side -side on pylons for travel in both directions along a route. For the passenger-only system, the tubes would be 2.23 meters in diameter and having an estimated wall thickness of 20 to 23 millimeters. So just how viable is the Hyperloop? While Hyperloop development projects are cropping up around the world, Cost and risk are two hurdles that have not yet been overcome entirely. There is great uncertainty attached to the complete cost picture of the Hyperloop system and infrastructure. At the very fact of it, household names investing in Hyperloop are forecasting attractive numbers. Although heavily hooked into route and whether it's a passenger or cargo application, initial calculations administered for SpaceX's solution, Hyperloop Alpha, indicate that infrastructure costs are going to be within the range of 17 million US dollars per mile. Meanwhile, Virgin estimates that their Hyperloop One system might be two-thirds that of high-speed rail. However, despite the fact that estimates indicate lower costs than comparable alternatives like high-speed rail and aviation, the complete picture of hidden costs like acquiring land rights is not clear. Sources claim that the value might be the maximum amount, as 16 times above that originally suggested within the SpaceX Paper 8. 
This cost comparison will contrast even starker for Hyperloop cross-continental Hyperloop routes, additionally to being logistically complicated. Then there's the value of safety. During this development process, it's vital to create a sensible picture of the risks of Hyperloop. This may enable balanced decisions to be taken about the opportunities and measures which will be put in at the first stages of projects to manage the risks to acceptable levels. Elimination of hazards and ensuring inherent safety principles are applied is vital during the concept and style stages, as during operation, there is limited scope for changing fundamental aspects of the system. With regards to the tube through which the vehicles will travel, the biggest challenges for the planning and integrity during operation are likely to be in balancing the technical and economic factors influencing route selection and whether to bury, install above ground, or maybe to require offshore. This is often including achieving the required global straightness requirements for the tube and maintaining these during service, alongside managing local imperfections of the tube and, if used, the rails. Underpinning these decisions are going to be a selection of optimum materials for the tube and supports, with possibly conflicting requirements concerning vacuum containment, global alignment, static and dynamic behavior, section manufacturability, sustainability, carbon footprint, construction, and in-service integrity management, where subsea tube sections are being considered, there are design, construction, and integrity management challenges to be addressed. With the promised speed of 1,220 kilometers per hour, travel times might be significantly reduced for both passengers and freight. Thanks to faster transit times, stocks and inventories could even be reduced, lowering costs across several points of production change. Vicinity to city center is, however, a prerequisite this efficiency thanks to necessary fast turnaround and embarking times. As such, investment into researching and developing Hyperloop technology is ramping up. At present, even the foremost advanced of the several projects currently underway appear to be at a really early prototype stage. The earliest expected service date for any of those projects is towards 2030. It's speculated that projects within the Middle East or India might be the primary to demonstrate an entire system capable of transporting freight and or passengers, albeit at slower service speeds than originally indicated by SpaceX. The variety of those routes appear to be much shorter than the first ideal city pairing suggested within the SpaceX paper. Instead of shortening journey times to compete with high-speed rail and aviation, the justification for these shorter routes appears to be centered around the reduction of commuting times and easing congestion in additional densely populated areas. If you like this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos in the future. Also, hit the bell icon to stay up to date and be the first one to watch our latest videos.